G'day friends, welcome to today's video tutorial. I've seen a bunch of you comment about the foam stamps that I've been using from Mermaid or that you've seen make a little appearance. Now these are made a long, long time ago and they are seriously nothing special. Just kids craft foam and some cardboard. So I'm gonna give you a really quick, simple tutorial today to uh, get your creative juices flowing, hopefully add to your uh, stash of art supplies that you probably shouldn't be adding to. <laughs> uh, but just a fun little project and uh, some things to think about when you're making some foam stamps. The first thing is, please don't be precious about this. Um, try to make things that uh, are simple for you to make. Try to make things that you don't really have uh, in your stash already or that you don't have easy access to. Like, uh, and try to make things that are relevant to what you use. So the first ones I really made were these um, seaweed kind of ones. And I actually used the bits that I cut out from this one, I actually stuck it on here. Now, some of these are just foam shapes that I found from kids packs. This was an old, like it was supposed to be a little album, but I needed the board to, to put my thing on. Um, some of these are just kids foam. Some of these are like little uh, things that I got. I think it was to like an anti-stick thing. Some of them were just literal like shapes. That wasn't one. This is trim, little foam trim. Anything that's foam is, is pretty much gonna hold your paint. Now I'd say these work with paint better than they work with ink, but that doesn't mean you can't use ink with them. I wouldn't go into this expecting that you're gonna get the most perfect impressions out of these stamps either. Uh, so nothing too detailed, but some some foam will actually retain uh, like lines if you, if you scratch them in there enough. So you can do that. I don't have that foam today, this is, I don't know where this came from, this one. Um, but yeah, it, it's just gonna be for basically playing with backgrounds and adding textures and adding um, fun shapes and patterns to your mixed media art journaling backgrounds. So that's what we're gonna look at today. These are the samples. Now, um, some of these I have literally never used before. Like this one I have never used before, which might be nice to use today. Um, and you can see I have just, this is the back of a paper pad. You know those backing, the chipboard backing that we never really have a, a reason to keep? I've made this that I've never used before. That might be fun. Um, I, I've never used these little pennant flags before. Some of these you can see are just little ditties to, uh, you know, repeat pattern stamp everywhere you can. Other ones, of course, are much bigger. And um, some of them I've made as kind of background uh, textural elements. Like this is something fun to stamp on and look like shattered glass. Now, I'm gonna get my stuff out and uh, set up. You're going to need some foam or uh, you can just use regular foam or you can use sticky back foam. I would suggest something a little thicker than this. We might end up having to double up on this. I'm not quite sure just yet. Um, these were made with these thin foams and uh, as long as you apply paint kind of lightly over the top, it, it'll be okay. But thicker foam if you can get it. I've also got these foam shapes to play with as well. And uh, I've got foam glue. Now I feel like any regular glue would work. Also there are foam sheets that have uh, sticky back adhesive. So you could use those as well. It's essentially what these are, but these are die cut in two shapes. So you're gonna need that. You're gonna need scissors and a, a marker or something to draw your shapes on if you wanna plan something out. And you're gonna need a cardboard backing to be able to mount your stamp onto. I would recommend just taking anything, like the back of a paper pad. I've got these big cardboard sheets here that came in one of my uh, packages. Anything you have that is sturdy enough to, uh, to, to be able to put your little foam things on and will kind of stand the test of time. Look, it doesn't really matter. These things are not precious. They're so inexpensive to make. I think all up with coupons and everything, the glue, the foam sheets and, um, and the foam stickers cost me $9 and you can get tons of stamps out of that. So I wouldn't be too precious and looking for things that are, you know, non-porous surfaces and getting super strong glues. You know what? Once it falls apart, you'll know you loved it. You can always make a new one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna recommend to you that you you leave the uh, the longevity side of this uh, at the door and more just worry about getting something created and using it in your work so let's just uh, cut up a strip I want to go for a long one I really do prefer these long stamps if you really are super worried you could also double up the uh, cardboard as well so I'll just do that just just to show you that I care <laughs> I'm just gonna use some of the foam glue to uh, to get that down. And then you'll have something a bit thicker if you really, really need it. I'm gonna draw my pattern onto this sheet. So I'm gonna put this here just so I know exactly how big this is. Don't go too detailed with your patterns either. Um, you'll find that it becomes really difficult to cut out 
And to be honest, when you go to stamp it, you're not going to keep a lot of that fine detail. So you'll find that you don't really need to go too overboard with the with the detail. Just something graphic, I would suggest. Something uh, that is very bold. Now's the time to really take yourself there. <laughs> I'm actually going to double this up as I cut it. What I might want to do is lay some adhesive on the back. With this white one, I can kind of see where the leaves are. So you might want to grab some white foam sheet. If you can only find this thinner one, maybe grab a white, use a black marker, permanent marker, Sharpie marker, it doesn't really matter, as long as you can see. And then you'll be able to double up as you go. Also, don't worry about being neat. You're gonna throw paint all over this stuff anyway. It's really not gonna matter at the end of the day. <laughs> Best thing about working on this white pushes paper as well is we can just stamp it straight onto there. I might grab out some tissue paper as well just to uh, make some elements to stick in my journal or collage elements with patterned backgrounds and papers. These also work really well on your gel plates as well to be able to add a, a pattern or a texture into those. Again, I'm really not worried about following the lines. I just want the shape. It'll give you a really uh, new appreciation for stamps when you're looking at them in the store. You'll find yourself thinking, well, oh, I could make that, or what if I took the best of this stamp and made it with the best of this stamp, or do I really need that? Or you'll feel kind of more confident to make stuff on your own, I reckon, because sometimes, you know, I, I work in so many different journal sizes, and uh, every time I go to my large Delusions journal, I, rec I realized that a lot of my uh, products weren't made for a journal that size. A lot of people use their Dina Wakely Media Journal as well, which I think is a little bigger than most standard journal sizes. So um, I feel like making your own stamps for those big journals is, is really good. All right, I've got this ready. I've got this ready. And now I'm just going to glue it down. I'm being generous with this foam glue because I know that I'm not really going to need to use it after this project. But uh, you probably don't need to put as much on as I did. I might just suggest getting the sticky backed uh, thing. There's real, not a huge price difference I've noticed. So maybe save yourself some effort and just get the sticky backed. Something like this that is um, all flat, like the, the pieces don't really separate like this. You might be fine just grabbing your brayer or a brush and uh, swiping it all over. For me, I like to use a uh, latex sponge just because I find it easier to um, put the paint all over there. Now, the first couple of times you do it, you're kind of conditioning the foam, you know what I mean? You're building up a little layer of resistance. Uh, some of the paint might seep into it on the first couple of goes. So just uh, you may maybe use some cheaper paint as you're you know, kind of conditioning and priming your stamp. I also like to be a little more generous than I need to be with this because I actually like the texture of the, the paint as it pulls off the the stamp and onto the paper. If you want to go, go less or you want to use ink or something, just ink it up or paint it up and then spritz it with water. All right, I mean, that's pretty graphic. It's, uh, it's a little messy, <laughs> uh, but we could go again. This time I'm gonna grab some water and just, uh, I'll do a, a bit more of a light coat and then spritz it with water. Show you the difference. There we go. So now I've got this uh, wannabe leaf pattern, kind of cactus blossom looking thing in my eyes. You can uh, go for gold, really. I'm gonna grab some of this um, Tim Holtz tissue wrap or tissue paper because I do wanna get another little print off of that. All the ghost prints are just as much fun as the other ones, like the ones that work out. I just love using these to build in texture. It's, it's so cheap, it's so simple, and it's so effective. So this will look really great layered in my journal. Oh, it's even seeping through. I hope it's not seeping through onto my desk. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check. All right, it's kind of becoming a danger zone for my desk, so I think I'm just gonna reset up for a second. I'm just gonna use this other piece of cardboard that I have, and we can uh, we can play on these little bits of paper. So we've done this one, right? That one was fun. Let's make a smaller one and not do all the extra fuss and bother that we just did. Let's use some of the foam uh, stickers, just to show you that you you know it really just could be as simple as this. This would be super fun to do with kids as well. I mean, especially with the stickers, there's really not much. Uh, you couldn't do with these. I'm gonna do clouds. I'm just gonna try and rub off the rest of this paint onto these to kind of prime them a little bit. Some foam will absorb more of that paint in the beginning stages, but once you get a little bit of a build up going on, you'll notice that they all end up being the same. So I, I wouldn't recommend one style of foam over another. Just uh, 
give it a good use the first couple of times you use it. And give it a spritz. Sometimes the water will uh, activate your paints. If you've got one of these paints that is uh, water reactive, these water-based dyes and inks and paints, etc., etc., uh, you can get some really nice water effects in here. So you know that Diane's uh, Dilutions paints are water reactive. Um, Tim Holtz, his paints are water reactive. The, uh, the dilution spray, the distress inks. I think your oxides would look really great with this as well if you spritz them with water. Essentially, it's it's you know it's it's not unlike any other stamp you have. You could just feel so much less precious about it. And obviously, you can't really use acrylics on your on your little photopolymer stamps. <laughs> so there's one there. I might be almost tempted to do one on the back so that I could um, free up space in my little storage cart, but. I'm just gonna get paint everywhere because I'm impatient. <laughs> Let's make one a bit bigger. So essentially like we could cover maybe a full A5 journal page with it. So we're gonna make a background one now. I'm not measuring because I'm not bothered. I really like these shapes. I think these would be fun to do a full background with. It's so much quicker with the stickers. <laughs> If you can find sticker shapes, you might have more fun with this project. But if you're one of those people that really want to take the project there, then you you might just have to um, grin and bear it. Do your cutting and your gluing. It all just depends on what you want, I guess. Do you know what? I think that looks good for me. I'm going to grab myself a little bit more of this uh, tissue tape. The fun thing about this is you can also be a little bit more controlled about where you put your paint as well. So if you want to do a specific like ombre effect or, you know, if you want to go from purple to pink to orange on your stamp, you can do that much easier on this than you can with inks. I know they sell those ink pads out there that you can kind of create your own, but this is, this honestly, you could do it different every single time. You don't have to be at the mercy of whatever ink pad you can afford. So I'm going to do that with this example. I'm going to... Uh, put the purple on first, then I'm going to put on the pink, and then I'm going to put on the orange. I'm going to spritz that a little. I like to spray it with water just to reactivate some of the pain if it's uh, gone to sleep. There was a lot of paint on that, so this might be a little messy, but we'll see. There you go. I mean, how effective is that? And imagine that just in your journal on a background page. I really like this one. I've never seen these shapes before. They look like little hands, kind of. Well, weird hands, but. <laughs> um, let's uh, get a ghost impression of this one right here. Don't be afraid to layer lots of things over the top of one another. I know people look at this and think, oh, well, you've lost your original stamp, but at the end of the day, I might just put this in my stash and only want to use this corner for something and tear it off and uh, glue that into a collage or something. So um, it is all worthwhile, believe it or not. If you want to make border ones, that's a good idea too. Typically, I like to make borders with uh, repeat kind of repeat elements. So if I just use circles, that's enough for me. Before you know it, you can cover a whole space. Um, these, I mean, repeating patterns in lines are also a good idea if you want to build your backgrounds up, but you want to have more control over it as well. So you're not covering a whole large space like in the last stamp, but say you only wanted to build, um, you know, consecutive layers, but you didn't want to do as much. You could mask areas off, or you could just go to town, just repeat stamping yourself all over the page. But circles, I mean, circles are pretty fun and easy. So I guess the things that I would think about if you're going to attack this project, make ones that are uh, pretty unusual and fit your bigger journals, because I find those are, are, are probably a bit more helpful to use. Uh, don't be afraid to make full backgrounds with uh, some of these repeat elements and motifs. And also borders. Borders is a really fun thing to think about as well. You've kind of got three different sizes going on there, and three different things to think about, but they all kind of work interchangeably at the end of the day. And uh, you're probably just gonna have fun playing with the shapes and cutting things up. Like you can make one that's completely abstract and just have the most bizarre shapes all over it. These have got fun little animals. I wouldn't do anything with letters or numbers because they are going to flip reverse. So just remember that. <laughs> but it is just gonna be up to your imagination. This is another border stamp here. I'm gonna stamp this one out and have a look at it because I've never tried it and I remember making it. I take back what I said about not using your brayer. You can. <laughs> For some reason, I thought the paint would uh, would would get stuck in between all the grooves, but I've just realised that it's more likely to get stuck with this than the brayer. So, 
I'm an idiot, don't worry about me. I'm just gonna smooth it over though. Give it a bit of a spritz. Grab this one out, cause this one hasn't got enough. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm not, I'm gonna stamp it actually on this foam. Just to show you that like foam stamps are actually really good for textiles as well. You use fabric paint and you're trying to make your own fabrics. Whatever you can put onto it, it will stamp. I really like that. I should use this one more often. I'm gonna keep that one out. I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna try this tree too. I never tried this. It took me ages to cut out those little sticks and I never tried it. That print was uh, quite faint. You know what? I have some black which might look effective. Well, that's fun. Do you know what that looks like to me? That looks like a train station grid. I'm gonna use that for train stations. <laughs> Oh, I might try these too. I'm surprised there's ones I hadn't tried. I thought I'd used all of them. I must have just had a really fun day making them and put them away. Oh, that's fun. I like those too. I like all of these. This is, I, you know what? I'm having that exact same feeling that I had the first time and I was like, you know what? I should make a hundred more. But then I, I put them away and I don't ever use them again. I might throw out the ones that I don't want anymore and uh, replace them with these. There are some that are a little ridiculous. If you do have these, this type of foam that will retain some of that um, line, if you sketch it in, I remember doing this with a, um, you could also do this with like a Chinese takeout box, I think. You can uh, use a pencil and just etch in these lines so that when you come to stamp it, it will be missing this area. 10 points to anyone that goes far enough back into my um, social media and finds the little video where I made these. <laughs> it's like right back at the beginning. This one's actually quite effective. It's a fun little border. Yeah. See, anywhere it's etched in, it's going to skip, which is really fun. So if you did want to do letters or numbers or something, just get some of this foam. I don't know what it's called, don't know where it's from. <laughs> uh, but anything that can hold some of its shape if you etch into it. But just remember to do it backwards. So print it out and like turn it on the back and then trace it or something. But yeah, just remember whatever will stamp will, will become backwards. See, this line goes this way, but when you stamp it out, it goes that way. Just a tip. <laughs> this one's fun too. I like this half moon one. This one I haven't even used like cardboard on it. It's just corrugated cardboard. <laughs> it's really flimsy. So when you press, you have to be careful not to press down where the paint might have seeped into. But still, look, sometimes it's gonna get this really nice smooth effect. Sometimes it's gonna skip spots, but that's just the nature of this stuff. And you know what? Spending $9 and coming out with hundreds of stamps, I think you're gonna be fine. <laughs> Like I said, it's just mainly for getting all these uh, graphic patterns and background textures and lots of fun ways to uh, get stamps that will work for you and your style of journaling and your aesthetic. Because sometimes we can't find what we like to do and sometimes we know exactly what we want to do and sometimes it's just, you know, you just got to make it yourself sometimes. So. This is, uh, this is what I'm gonna leave you with today. I hope you had fun. I will probably continue to make a few more stamps with some of these shapes and uh, put them into my regular gathering. But other than that, this is the fun that you're in for with uh, foam stamping. Probably not the best example. Let's show this one. <laughs> Um, just lots and lots and lots of fun. So have a great time uh, playing with it. Let me know how you get on with the foam stamps. It really was just as simple as that. There's no trick behind it. You will totally get it. My recommendation is don't be precious about it. And also uh, try and get the foam stickers or the foam sticker sheet because it's so much easier than doing the glue. That's about it. Until next time. Bye.